People of YouTube, how are you all doing? I uh, hope you're all doing good. Yes, so uh, I'm back from a rather eventful revival. Finally recovered enough to do a video. Well, sort of recovered. I'm still brains mush, but there's no difference there, I suppose. But yeah, so uh, all I can say is just wow. Such a good weekend. Hopefully it'll be on next year as well. And if it is, I just urge all of you just to get down there and go because it's just totally worth it. If you're on the fence, just, just get yourself there. So, yeah, but where do I start? I mean, I guess uh, from the beginning. So, um, travelling over, I came and uh, picked up Dylan Craven from... Uh, he's he's a YouTube commenter. You probably all know who he is. He, uh, such a great guy. So, yeah, um, he's not got a channel yet, but hopefully he will do soon. Uh, but, yeah, like, we picked him up and we uh, just non-stop chatted all the way to Revival, which is good, because I've never met him before. And uh, yeah, such a good, such a good guy. I'm so glad that we've met. But yeah, so we got over there, and uh, I decided to park up at someone's driveway uh, on the Parkopedia or something. Up, uh, decided to park up there so we I could just drink at Revival because there was no overnight parking there. So uh, parked. I dropped Dylan off with a ton of like stuff to give out to people and everything, um, and then I parked up and walked back. And uh, yeah, walked back and. Uh, it said it was going to be a 10 minute walk um, uh, on, when I booked the parking place and yeah it wasn't. <laughs> it was just over a mile to get there. So yeah I, was, I got there and I, was, I probably could do with the exercise anyway. So first thing I saw uh, Cine Steve and uh, I think it was Rob wasn't it. Uh, you guys were outside um, just having a chat and said hi. Uh, got myself in there and because um, uh, obviously Dylan went in ahead of me. Uh, so uh, I just went in there with them guys and I met up with uh, Nintendo Arcade, uh, Alex. Uh, yeah, so we had a bit of a chat and uh, he took me straight to the bar. <laughs> so that was a good fit, good way to start things, I think. Yeah, so uh, good meeting you. Um, it was obviously slightly like throughout the whole weekend, really. But um, yeah, so got to the bar and everyone was there. There was pretty much a lot, majority of the YouTubers are already at the bar. So I had my drink, got my drink, but... Uh, my anxieties was getting a bit of the best of me at that time, so um, I had to have a bit of a, I sloped off a little bit and uh, went around the shopping. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so did that for a little bit and uh, met up with Holster, Holster TV. So yeah, it was good meeting you. We had a bit of a chat about uh, the car boot, some of her car boots is uh, one of my, well, it wasn't my local car boot, but it's one I've been to from my neck of the woods, from uh, back where I was a kid. I went there a couple of years ago and I recognised it on the videos and I was like, is that, is that a certain one? So yeah, so we had a bit of a chat about them car boots and everything. So uh, yeah, uh, she's got some stellar stuff I've heard. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, so carried on, walked around, started buying stuff. Uh, who was next? I've done a bit of a list of everyone I met. Tried to do it in as much of an order as I could remember sort of thing so yeah a few few drinks and uh my broke memories just like i say just turns to mush so <laughs> so yeah met up with uh scott glory hunter um we had a good chat he's a good pretty cool guy he likes a lot of the same stuff that i do really all the xbox stuff and everything like that so uh, yeah we did a bit of a trade and everything like that so uh um yeah went over had another walk around, I think I think it was with Dylan at this time, uh, and I met up with Dainster who was stalling out there. Dainster and his mate Liam, so I uh, met Liam for the first time. Um, I'm not too sure if he comments or anything like that, but um, yeah, it was a uh, good chatting to you guys. Uh, I think Dainster saw me coming over and he was like, nice one, I can get rid of all my PlayStation 2 tat. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, my room's already full of it, so uh, I think I've already got most of that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, next up, uh, I did all my shopping and everything like that and uh, came sat down and I met up with uh, Mark Burnt Out Culture um, without further to do Mike, uh, Mr. Bads and Jay Cybersteak uh, you was all sat around a table having a bit of a chat so I came and sat with you guys uh, and yeah awesome guys, awesome guys all of you, like I mean I've been watching you guys for probably the longest well one of the longest out of all, all of them so yeah it's really good to actually finally catch up with you guys um and again i mean we was chatting all through the whole weekend really so uh yeah uh and then um had a bit of another wonder around and uh came back to that same table and then this guy came up and was like right eddie <laughs> and i was like 
uh, I don't recognise you. And then obviously said another couple more words and then instantly recognised him. It was old school variety face. <laughs> so yeah, finally know what you look like. I mean, I was just making presumptions all the way through the weekend. Like there was these women with like big red hair and everything like that. I was like, I mean, that could be you. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah, great meeting you. Like proper, proper uh, wild guy. You <laughs> proper sound guy. Uh, yeah. Um, and then next up, met up with Tooty Stuart. Finally met up with Tooty. I've seen him at Dongy Markets a few times, but I always like chatting to people, so I didn't want to disturb him or anything. I mean, it's just, I don't think he ever gets a chance to stop talking, really, because it's like as soon as he walks away, someone else will just grab him and start chatting to him. <laughs> so I think he just knows everyone, really. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and I then um, started walking around again and met up with Scott, uh, Sega Zombie, and his mates. So we were uh, talking about a few things. Talk, talking about Super Nintendo, <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. So it was really good meeting up with you guys. So yeah. Um, next up, um, somewhere along the lines, it was uh, I met with Pete uh, on a retro tri trip. So uh, yeah, um, I think he's just started chatting to me on the the old uh, YouTube. So it's really cool to actually fully have a bit of a chat, really. And uh, also another guy that I've only just uh, started watching on uh, YouTube's is uh, Jimmy Re Jimmy Retro and his Mrs. Sally. So yeah, proper sound. Like he, he was telling me about his like five pound, like all of his games that he's got in his room are like five pound or less. I think he's got like an average of like one pound fifty for his Mega Drive games and he's got like a hundred Mega Drive games. How the hell does he do that? <laughs> it's great. And some of the stuff that he's got, it's not like just like sports games or anything like that. They're like high end titles, like hundred pound games. So, <laughs> well, plus some of them. So yeah, like, uh, awesome guy proper sound like proper down to earth and then uh, when when we went back to the hotel um met up with this other guy um i've never i've seen his names like banding about on the, the channels and everything like that but i've never i've never seen his videos or anything like that but he seems, seems pretty cool and i've subscribed to his channel and that guy's the rapa ja channel rpg maybe i don't know uh, if you see this, you can maybe uh, tell me, is it something to do with RPGs? I've not actually watched any of your videos yet, but I will be doing that like soon. I mean, it's been off on the revival. I've got like such a big backlog of videos to watch. So um, yeah, can't wait to get around to some of them, I think. But yeah, so um, I've probably missed out a few people, but such a good weekend, as I say. Uh, the community spirit, I mean, is just top, top notch. All the people that I met, were exactly how um, they come across on the videos. So there was like no egos, everyone was just proper sound. And I think by the sound of like everything that went down and everything like that, I think they were, everyone will just do so, help you out if any spot of trouble. <laughs> so it's really good seeing that like community spirit like all pull together like it did over this weekend. So yeah, great. So uh, what did I get? Um, I got quite a lot of stuff actually. <laughs> I was quite surprised. I was, I, I thought I was going to go there just to play the arcades and everything like that, and maybe pick up a few things. Um, I just, I took a budget. Um, it wasn't like it was quite a big budget, but it was like more to do with like drinking and stuff like that, really. Uh, so um, I ended up playing like about a few games, like about three or four games on the arcades, and really good actually because. Um, we were supposed to, on the last day, we, we heard about the Revival, the video game, which was an arcade machine. And we forgot to go. We went past it, I think. We forgot forgot about it. I would have really liked to have played that. So Revival needs to come back so I can play that game. But yes, oh my goodness, there was so many top-notch systems there. Like uh, Panasonic Q, the um, FM Towns Marty, um, the SS, uh, Super Famicom TV. Oh, and the... the the Dreamcast Divers TV, which is the first time I've ever seen that one before in the flesh, which is cool. And, oh, and the Wonder Mega. So many things that I need to spend my money on, and, uh, but it's never going to happen. We're, we're never going to get them. I don't really need them, really, to be fair. But, um, yeah, as I say, I didn't really get much gaming, to be honest. Um, but, uh, I mean, the community, that that's, it was just buying games and the community. That was the best thing, really. So yeah, as I say, right, what did I get? What did I get? So uh, started off, um, started off quite big because um, Dylan had a few things for me. Um, 
we had a bit of a trade up we had a bit of a trade and he gave me uh, he gave me too much stuff really <laughs> he gave me a switcher box which you can probably just see on the top of this so now I don't have to like pull the TV out every time I want to change the console or anything like that uh, I just need to get one cable for it and then it'll be sorted so then it'll be just up and running it looks like a really good quality box uh, next up he gave me Sega Rally on the Sega Saturn uh, I used to absolutely love this game as a kid um, I used to spend so many so many hours just trying to shave off like microseconds but obviously I played the, the English version but so cool to have the Japanese one in the collection I'll probably get the PAL one as well but I just love the look of the both of them together really I think that's something cool to have um, and next up the, the, the other thing that he gave me and this is such a biggie um, rapid reload for the PlayStation and this is in like amazing condition amazing condition so yeah manual and yeah so it basically looks like Gunstar Hero uh, but for the PlayStation and this was like a, a launch game back um, back when the PlayStation first came out so it kind of like because it was 2D it just went under the radar um, no one really I, to be honest I don't think I even knew about it or if I did it didn't really like go into my brain uh, which can be quite easy really nothing goes into my brain but yeah like I really can't wait to play this it's probably going to be uh, put straight up into uh, my uh, play playlist so yeah that's that was that um, I suppose well we'll go to another trade as well uh, got uh, glory hunter um, say we did a bit of a trade right at the start uh, obviously we knew what we we told each other what we always wanted and I gave him something decluttered my house so I've got no room for it so it can uh, fill up his room <laughs> and I got these um, these pretty cool things so I got a load of these I don't know if anyone remembers but I picked up a couple of these and he Scott said I've got loads of these uh, come in so yeah, as I say we just did a bit of a trade so they're a bit of a mystery box but they're sort of like yeah a bit focused you get all these um, but some of them you don't know which ones you're going to get. So he he unboxed all these on uh, one of his videos. So I might put a link to that in the, the channel if I remember. But yeah, so uh, what was in this one? So we've got Blinky on this one. Is it Blinky? Hang on. Who was it? Yeah, Blinky it is. So uh, pink Pac-Man ghost. Um, yeah, so these are going to be just dotting around my, ha uh, my room just to make it look a bit prettier than just spines everywhere. So next up is a centipede one. Um, I think this is just the centipede. Let's have a look. Yeah, so that's the centipede, which I've actually already got. But what I'll probably do is I'll probably just have these around the house a little bit, so spread them out a little bit because they're, they're pretty cool little things, really. Uh, next up, we've got a Cubert one, which is another one I've not got. So, what's in this one? So yeah, it's actually just the Cubert. <laughs> These figures are so cool. I just love them. I say it just makes just makes the room a little bit more interesting. I think so. I'll probably keep the boxes as well because like little arcade machines. Um, and so next up is a Pac-Man one. So can I've not actually looked through these yet. So yeah, this is another ghost. Which one's this one? Oh no, this one's Blinky and the other one was Miss Pac-Man Ghost, the pink one. So, yep, that's that. And this is the, oh, no, no, another one here that just dropped down, which is a Dig Dug one. So, yeah, these are made by Funko, which is probably the best thing Funko's ever done, really, because uh, the Funko stuff, I just don't like the look of them at all. But yeah, oh, this is really cool. This is the little Dig Dug guy. So, uh, yeah, and... The one that I'm really, really looking forward to getting is this one, which is a mystery box, but you're always going to know which one this is because it's the only one. Uh, I don't know why it's part of the series, but I'm so glad it is, which is, yeah, the Mega Man one. So, yeah, as I say, there's no other Mega Man characters in it, so you know what's going to be in this. And, yes, there was a, uh, a Mega Man arcade, but it just doesn't seem to fit with the rest of, the, like, these 8-bit sort of systems. But, yeah, let's have a look at this one. Let's have a look. So yeah, he's, he has got the, the sort of Funko kind of cuteness to him, I suppose, but 
it's still really cool to have. It's actually my first Mega Man figure, so I'd love to have a few more of them, really. But they're a bit hard to find over here in England. It's not like in America, where they just seem to be abundant. So, yeah. Right, next up, right, so I'm trying to do this as best of an order I can, but it's a bit tricky, really, because it was just a bit like a bit of a free-for-all, really. But this is the first game I got, and I was so, so, so buzzing for it, really. <laughs> and everyone will be like, why, why are you so excited to get that? But uh, the game in question is the Car Racing Challenge. <laughs> it says £2 on there, and I took it up, and she says a pound, And I, I was like, well, I'm not going to haggle to that, am I? So what's so special about this one? Um, if you can see there, this is by 505 Games. This is my second to last game that I needed for the 505 full subset for the PlayStation 2. And I'm so happy because, I mean, I've been so close to like just dropping 20 quid off eBay to get this. Just so I can get like my subset complete. complete. And I'm so glad I held off. The case is a bit battered, but underneath it, is great so I just need to do a bit of a case donation and then that'll get unfortunately all these are on the outside and not actually on the, there so once I do that this is just gonna look great so probably a terrible well, I think it is a terrible game but uh, as I say it's just one that I needed so now I've just got one 505 game and that subsets complete and um, it, you probably if you don't know what it is because I know a lot of you guys do now who was at revival but if you don't know what it is, it's probably not what you're expecting. <laughs> it's something I could go on online and get for about, I think it's 35 quid. It was, uh, when I got to the last two, it was up there for 25 quid. And then like a week later, they put the price up to bloody 35 quid. It's like, well, it's not been selling. Why why put the price up? It <laughs> just baffles me, really. But yeah, next up, um, Odd, Oddworld Munches, uh, hang on, what is it? Oddworld Munches Odyssey for the xbox so um yeah as i've recently just got an xbox so uh, it's just good just to add a few titles and especially for a, just a quid i mean i just love how colorful like everything is on this one so this is like a, i think it's like a 3d um oddworld game which i'm not really a big fan of the original oddworld games so hopefully i might enjoy that if i ever get around to playing it so yeah i was like yeah buzzing this is uh, getting really cheap this get this um pickups thing uh, next up, I picked up. I don't know if this is next up actually, but it's just on the sort of like the top. Um, Vampire Hunter for the Dreamcast, which is obviously, well, I don't know if it is obvious, but if people know, it's Dark Stalkers for uh, the Sega Saturn. So in English, it's Dark Stalkers and Vampire Hunter over there. But yeah, it's six pound on the label, and I actually haggled these for uh, five pound. So yeah, this is from Saw Fums. So yeah, he's not very good at, he doesn't like his haggling. Uh, so I'm quite pleased to get a pound off that one, actually. <laughs> but yeah, so um, somewhere next up, I got Viewpoint uh, for the um, PlayStation 1. Yeah, like I've got quite a lot of PlayStation 1 games. I'm quite surprised, I've done really well. So uh, this is 18 quid and I dropped it down to 15 pound. But the condition of this is great, especially because these um, like smaller sort of PlayStation 1 games are a nightmare to replace the cases. It's not something that easy done, really. I don't know if there's many of these that are like a cheap one, so you can get like a donor copy. But I'm just, as I say, I'm just glad this one's a good one. Um, but yeah, a nice little isometric shooter, which was originally, I think it's originally at least anyway, on the, the Neo Geo Arcade. So, yeah, really cool. I think this was even on the Amiga at one point. I don't know. Might be wrong on that one. Uh, but, yeah, so next up, you'll see a theme coming along. <laughs> so, uh, right, hang on. Yeah, so these two go together. So, first up, I got Ridge Racer. So, I've upgraded my single case Ridge Racer to a double case one. So... That's really cool to have. This is one I used to love as a kid. I I think I had the double case one as a kid because it would have been like one of the original ones. So I guess they made it into a single case to cut costs. I'm not too sure. But yeah, um, this is a nice little upgrade and part of my double case set now. Um, so yeah, I got this and I got Starblade Alpha. 
uh, which is a, an amazing like sort of like uh, on rail sort of like uh, space sort of shooter like arcade game. It was on the Mega CD as well. And these guys, is it? This is the Gold Saucer games, yeah. So I asked a really cheeky bun, would you do <laughs> both of these for thirty quid? And he took them away, and he was like. Yeah, go on then. I was like, I was expecting them just to say 35 or something, and they just accepted 30. So basically, I bought this and I got that free. So as I say, deals are there to be had. I mean, if you just ask for, if you ask a price, and uh, if you've been chatting to them and everything like that, they're not too cheeky. Um, well, I'm saying that I'm very cheeky about, about prices, but yeah, um, yeah, you get deals. I mean, there's no point going and just paying willy nilly sticker prices. <laughs> So yeah, next up, uh, there was a little, I don't know who they are, I think it was like their own little um, collection, but across from, uh, who did I say, the the guys from York anyway, there was a little alcove and there was a guy just selling, I think, all his own stuff, and part of that was this, so I think, what was he called, TFI Entertainment have called themselves, so yeah, so the Grand Theft Auto Special Edition, so yeah, there's a little bit of a crack there, but all in all, it's in pretty good condition. There's a bit of a, a bit of a dink there, so I guess that's what caused the crack. But pretty much, this is like great condition. So yeah, I mean, this is the Grand Theft Auto I actually like playing. I used to play this on the PC back in the day. So it's a channel I prefer the isometric, not isometric, the top-down uh, sort of style of this one. So yeah, one I might actually play. But yeah. Now it's uh, just another one for the double set collection. Oh, and uh, what it, I don't know if I can remember saying, but um, yeah, 25 quid. I asked 20 and they said 22. So, I mean, I think that's a great price for that game. Um, and next up, one I'm really pleased to get uh, the Capcom Generations game. So, they had 20 quid on the sticker price, and uh, yeah, they gave it to me for 15. Well, they didn't give it to me. I, I asked them if they would, and they. They accepted. Bit of a number now in that one. Yeah, a couple of little cracks there, but nothing too bad. But the actual, it feels really smooth and like really clean. So, yeah, it's quite quite a good one. But yeah, it's a um, four disc affair. So I don't know if you guys know, but it actually came out um, on the um, Sega Saturn in Japan as. Uh, all separate releases, so you've got like Capcom Generations 1 as a 1 release, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And uh, Capcom Generations 5 is actually the Street Fighter collection, which goes for like stupid amount of money over here. But the Capcom Generations games are quite expensive actually on the uh, Saturn, so it's really good to pick this up for 15 quid. So, yeah, really pleased with that. So, yeah, next up, um, some Amiga stuff now. So yeah, um, part um, where I got the Odd World Munch's Odyssey, they, were, they basically were selling like I don't know junk games or something. They was called I don't know if they was calling them that or something, but yeah, it was just like bargain jit games for like fifty p to three pound, um, and that, as I say, that's why I got that for a pound. And like his whole store was pretty much that, except for a few Game Boy games where there was good quality games. Um, but yeah, so part of what he had there was uh, Captain Dynamo uh, for the Amiga, which I wouldn't mind getting all of these uh, little um, Codemaster games because they look real fun. They're just like uh, sort of like budgety games, but like sort of really good quality for like the price. But yeah, this was three pound. This was, or did he even? In fact, I think it was three pound, and I think I even got got him down to two pound on this one actually. Um, but yeah, it's got like the manual, the disc. So, yeah, really pleased with this one. Nice, colourful little game. Nice little, uh, small little box. So, yeah. Uh, next up, we did a bit of a trade with 2E. I just gave him a load of shit. And he gave me this amazing thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so, this game is one I used to play a lot as a kid. And, like, so you got your disc and, like, the artwork in there is just amazing. So it's like 60s sort of like, 60s, 70s sort of like uh, cartoon style um, graphics. And yeah, so this was like an isometric game. And I didn't realise, but, well, I did realise, but there was an arcade. 
and the two that was telling me about it and he said like basically you have because it's an isometric game you can sort of like have the like the rotary sort of joysticks so you can direct where you're shooting and everything which would make this game a lot easier to play especially with a one button one joystick game like for the amiga but again i still had a lot of fun playing this as a kid so yeah great to add to the collection great to add to the collection so yep next up we have uh yep so god why what's wrong with me um the, the guys from york soul thumbs that's the guys so they had a mixture of everything like from atari 2600 fm towns marty uh japanese stuff english stuff commodore 64 everything and so yeah i was walking around with mr bads at the time and he was going what about this what about that <laughs> and he picked up this and he passed it to me and i was like yes i need that game <laughs> because it's been one i've been looking for for a while uh so this is silkworm which is a shooter game uh, uh, and this spawned uh silkworm 4 which is better known as swiv or super swiv and this is what i don't get so how did it go from silkworm to silkworm 4 where what, what what's the like it was a silkworm 2 and 3 that we missed out on or what where did it come from but yeah such a cool game like um played this a lot as a kid more swift to be honest but and this is a bit of a different style of game as well because this is like a side scroller where it's super swift well swift is um a top down um what's it called vertical shooter and it's a bit more yeah a bit cool and that's you've got tanks in the uh, swift so yeah cool to have and that was 15 pound as well by the way and this if you know this usually goes for about 40 to 50 quid so such a bargain <laughs> and the big well i think the biggest bargain because i've been looking for this game for years i've been this is one of the ones that you, you know when you start doing a collection you you have like in your head certain games that you want to have and this is one of them because even though it's not like a great game well i think it's a great game but it's not like i suppose well revered or well known uh, mr buds didn't seem to know about it which i was quite surprised about but this is one i used to play a lot with my sister and yeah so cool um yeah so the game in question is firepower so this game is like a tank game where you can play one or two players and you basically have to capture the base bring back uh, like a flag or something like that and then that's you win you won but like you you have to like destroy sort of like the turrets and everything that are, like constantly firing at you the other, the other guys and the other, or girls on the other side of it, and then you can like fight each other. Such a cool game, and I don't know, but I'm pretty certain uh, the sequel. There is a sequel to this on the PlayStation One called Return Fire. I'm certain that's the sequel to this because it looks very similar to it, and it's got fire in the name. I'm certain it is, but yeah. Uh, as I say, I've been looking for this on eBay for years, and I've never seen it. And there's one on there at the moment, and someone's got it for a thousand pound. Well, it's like just over a thousand, one thousand something euros or something. Um, and I don't think that's what it's worth. But I mean, there's none being sold. As I say, I've been looking on and off for, for a while. But I just all I know is this is definitely worth more than eight quid, and I'm so happy to have it. And I love this small form factor of a box. It's so cool. So uh, yeah. So we've got like the instructions and the disc. I'm not sure if that's the original disc, but I'm not too fussed really. As I say, it's more for the artwork. And yeah, so he had like a big stack of Amiga. Oh well, a big stack of boxes um, of games, like a sort of like big box, like sort of Amiga games. And there was one in particular I saw, and I was like, um, just double checking that stat there's an Amiga like all Amiga games and he was like yeah yeah these are all Amiga so I was like oh, so pleased there was this one game and I asked him to pass it to me and I passed it he passed it over to me and uh, it was uh, Fernandez Must Die which is sort of like a, a commando clone so again one I used to play a lot of as a kid and I know that's like about 100 quid game or something and I was like how much is it and he was like a fiver and he passed it over to me and I was like so happy I was like Sort of nearly trembling just because I was like finally gonna get it opened it up and there was a flipping cassette in there <laughs> it was like a spectrum version or something like that 
And I was like, to be honest, I'm kind of kicking myself now. For a fiver, I should have just picked it up. So I'm hoping he's going to be there at Doncaster and no one else has watched this video and is going to uh, take it from me. <laughs> Not that anyone wants my crappy flipping Amiga games, I just like all the shit. So. <laughs> and then um, as I was walking around, um, two was like, oh, do you want this game? I oh, know it. No, no, it's not this game. Yeah, so that's that's coming. But yeah, so um, I picked. No, that was it. I picked up this game, and this one seems to be getting quite hard to find. And this is in such great condition. Um, so this is sort of like a, a, another on rail sort of shooting kind of game. Don't think it's a very great one, but for ten quid, and I love this colourful artwork on here. I'm gonna say great condition. I. If someone was selling this uh, when I bought Sky Target um, the other day. If someone was selling this, and I didn't ask him how much it was, uh, but it made me look on eBay, and there was like none for sale. Oh no, there was one for sale, and, it, and, it, and I don't think it was going for like a crazy amount or anything like that. But it just seems to be a, a tricky one to find. So I'm really happy we've got this in the collection. And I was as I was picking that up, Tootie said, um, "I've got a Sega Saturn game. Do you fancy it?" So. Uh, I suppose um, we'll go to that next. So, uh, yeah, so <laughs> two gate. So we had the night out and everything like that. That was everything I picked up from the first day. And I, I was pretty much certain I was all spent up and I was all done. I spent about 100 quid on all that stuff. So I was like, yeah, it's quite happy with that. Um, and yeah, so. Tootie and Rob brought us back in his uh, rape van and oh my goodness, that absolute, that journey killed me. I, I was like ready to throw up at any minute. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he actually passed me this game uh, that he said, uh, do I want? And uh, that is Area 51 and he, he, he said you can have it for like a, a certain price, really cheap price, less than that's on this uh, sticker here. And I was like, yes, definitely, this is one that I'd really want. Um, the spine of it is a bit dodgy there, but I think the rest of it is good condition. It's got the manual and everything like that in it. So that was a great price. But uh, I was chatting to him uh, the day before, and I, he was talking about a game that like he tried getting off CEX, and uh, it went straight away. As soon as he bought it, it disappeared. So I saw said game, and I was like, I, I made a bit of a deal uh, with the guy um, and I picked up that game and I picked up these two games as well with it. So basically, I mean, Stu was like, oh, I'm really grateful and everything, but basically I probably actually uh, got it for less than what you asked me for that originally. <laughs> so I've got the good deal, so I'm happy and I'm hoping you're happy. Well, I think you're happy by the sound of it. So, But yeah, so the other two games I got with that deal uh, was uh, King of Fighters uh, Special Edition Maximum Impact. So yeah. Another little subset I'd love to complete because these are really hard to find, some of them. Well, not hard to find, they're just getting expensive. Uh, I suppose it's the Neo Geonos and as well, like I think Ignitions are quite a good like little subset to collect for as well. But yeah, great condition little box this is. So yeah, it comes with a little... Um... Oh, getting hard now, I've got all these animals set up on me. But yeah, it comes with... Well, it's, not like a, it's sort of like an art book, sort of like... A move list book but bloody hell look at all these moves that like one character has no way I could play this game but I might give it a go because it looks quite fun and I'm terrible at fighting games but look at that it's a cardboard sleeve so you know me I got I need to get it <laughs> so um, yeah so they knocked off loads of money for this and they did Dylan a great deal as well Dylan actually picked up a couple of Japanese PlayStation 1 games that great condition and they just dropped the prices we we just said what's the best deal and they just like slashed it so um but yeah so this the last game i got was obscure 2 which again is another one that's getting quite hard to find for a decent price so they had stickered on it 20 quid so again as i say i got all the like these three games for like nothing really um so yeah, all complete. Again, this is a cool little horror game. Uh, I know the first one's set at like a high school or something, but this one looks a little bit different. So the survivors have picked up and uh, picked up their lives and joined college. So this has gone from school, high school to college. 
So yeah, I've heard, I've not even got Obscure 1, so I need to get that one as well. So, you know, and I think that was pretty much all my horror games completed then um, on my sets. So yeah, so that was my money all spent up then. Uh, I know it was, it was like, let's go play some games. And then we started chatting to Japanese Alan on his stall. And he brought out some more games that wasn't, I'm sure these wasn't there the day before. Well, actually, no, this what this first one was, which is one I was um, I was going to get, but um, I saw these um, PlayStation 2 games, and that just kind of like, I was like, I'd rather get them than this. But, yeah, so I picked up Darius Twin. So this is what I was going to go, but I kept on in an iron about getting it, because it's, it, I'm getting too many Darius games at the moment, getting a bit, uh, not sick of them. But just like, yeah, just getting a bit, I don't know why, you just seem to be finding Darius games all the time. So yeah, this is a fairly cheap game to pick up, so that's why I wasn't too fussed about picking it up. But when I saw these other two games, which I'm sure you didn't have the day before, I was like, yeah, see if I can make a bundle deal. And he bundle dealed them and got a great price. Uh, <laughs> I should have been spending the money, but I did. I had to get them because I've been wanting these for a long time. So, games in question are Rockman 7, uh, or Mega Man 7, as uh, us Westerners like to call it. So, yeah, again, great condition and pretty good. I mean, the price is pretty much what it goes for in Japan. But when you've got a factory in, like, shipping, and if you get, like, stunned by customs, that price is just going to whack up even more so. So, I think... With the bundle deal, I got probably this for about 35 quid, maybe, maybe a bit less. And I probably got this for about 55 quid, which I think is an amazing price. So well, that is Rockman X3. So, really cool. I mean, I was thinking about getting this for the sake of Saturn, but I think I might just stick to just having the Super Famicom one. Especially now, this is pretty much, these two games now have completed my uh, Rockman Super Famicom collection. There's only, there is one more to get, which sort of is, but sort of isn't, which is the Rockman soccer game. I'm not a big football fan, so it's like, do I want to get it? But I probably will, because I mean, that's about 15, 20 years game, really. So I will probably add it to the collection. But yeah, that is my lot of stuff I spent up now. So, um... <laughs> um, yeah, it was it was nearly touch and go actually getting there uh, because I, I had my car in for MOT for like two weeks and I picked it up on the Friday afternoon before revival and I was like I was so worried to say to Dylan we might not be able to get <laughs> because yeah it was just I was just getting so anxious at that point <laughs> but it came a lot it came out we we got to revival had a great time. And spent a lot of money, got a lot of great things, met a lot of cool people, and I think, yeah, as I say, had a great time, and I felt so welcomed. So thanks to everyone for like uh, bringing me into like uh, bringing me to the group and everything like that because I'm such a new YouTuber. I wasn't expecting people to be speaking to me too much or maybe just like just say hi and everything, but I just felt just so welcome to the community. So thanks to everyone, and yeah. On to Doncaster next, so that's going to be in a couple of weeks. So uh, thank God it's payday before then. <laughs> so yeah, I'll see you guys later, and uh, yeah, goodbye.